Elden Ring, but I can't pick up any items. In the previous episode, after around 15 hours of gameplay, I managed to defeat Morgoth, and thus gain access to the Fire Giant, who completely destroyed me, so I needed to get stronger. Because I have defeated Morgoth, I could get his blade from the Remembrance, but I didn't have enough points in Dexterity, and because I despise oh farming, this meant that it was time to kill a bunch of random bosses in random portions of the map. First of all, I decided to defeat the Rigo Ancestor Spirit, as this is a All Remembrance run. Now, despite the Rigo Ancestor Spirit being a copy-paste of the regular Ancestor Spirit, it's actually much harder. First of all, he can teleport around the arena, which is very annoying. I would even say he's more annoying than the Elden Beast, because of how much he runs around. But that's not the main problem because this deer drags out the fight even more by healing himself. And I've counted that he heals himself around 3 times per fight, and each heal giving him back all his lost HP. Basically, you have to defeat this boss 4 times in one fight in order to actually defeat him. But actually, this would have been fine if not for this rolling attack. And what's up with bosses having impossible to dodge rolling attacks? This one move was responsible for around 99 of all my deaths. And that's because the timing to dodge this attack is very small. You have to be frame perfect in order to manage this attack without taking any damage. And again, in a normal playthrough, this would have been fine, but because I can't upgrade my healing flasks, I basically have to no-hit bosses in order to succeed. But eventually, after a couple of attempts, I managed to defeat the Rigo Ancestor Spirit and get his Remembrance, although it's not particularly useful even during a normal playthrough. As I said before, I'm trying to get some levels to wield Morgoth's Cursed Sword, and thus I needed to cheese the nice Calvary. I'm actually surprised I didn't do this yet, because this boss not only gives you a bunch of runes, but also Bloodhound Step, which will play a very important role later in the video. Then I also defeated a random NPC in Mount Gelmer in order to get the Ansper Raper, that I wanted to use as a Deal Scarlet Rod buildup, but again I completely forgot about it. As you can see, I decided to go to Volcano Mana for the Boskin Noble boss, but while traveling in the sewers, I've noticed another Bloodhound Knight, and I knew that he drops another weapon related to his set, but unfortunately this enemy does not count as a boss, and thus I had to loot him in order to get his claw, which means that I couldn't complete my Bloodhound Knight cosplay. Man, I'm so sad right now, how will I ever go on? Oh yeah, and the Godskin Noble, um, this fight was actually quite difficult, mostly because of the rolling attack, although I found a way to counter it. Wait... Oh, I hacked the system! You can't hit me now, can you, you stupid donut? But eventually, I of course managed to win. Oh man, that was so close! If he hit me one more time, I would have been dead. And this fight has not only rewarded me with some runes, but also with the knowledge that my summons are quite weak. And then I remember that if I defeat the boss in the giant catacombs, he will drop a glaive glove ward bell berry. And because I'm an absolute pro gamer, I just kept getting lost in the catacombs, stepping on every single trap and dying all the time. But once I got access to the boss, I realized something horrible. Wait. No, 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 I'm not doing this, goodbye, no. And the main reason why I didn't want to fight this boss is because I've already tried fighting the one in Altus, because he drops a golden seed, but I kept on dying, and I wasn't ready to go through this again. But to my surprise, I defeated this boss on my first try. This was mostly because he kept executing the, this jump attack, the timing of which I pretty much managed to master thanks to my previous attempts. Although after re-watching my footage, I think that the main reason why this fight went so well is because of the enormous size of the arena, and the fact that there are no obstacles on it, which allows me to freely dodge and run around the boss. 
Unfortunately, the amount of runes I got was still not enough in order to wield Morgoth's sword, so I decided to get to Morgwin Palace, but I couldn't complete Varys' questline, however, you are made of us. Which means that the only way was through the consecrated snowfield. So I quickly made my way to Commander Nile and realized that I can't loot this secret medallion. But thankfully, there is a glitch that allows you to get to the other side of the consecrated snowfield without the medallion, that I've explained in my previous challenge run. I immediately made my way to Ordina and gained access to the Halic Tree. Of course, the main problem were the archers located in this area, but after executing some sniper elite gameplay, I got access to the portal. Then I also defeated Anastasia, who would give me an ancient dragon smithing stone, which was very important, as this was the only ancient smithing stone I could get. Then I made my way to the teleporter that leads to Morgwin Palace, of course I got invaded, but I think that at this point, we all understand that this is in fact a Bloodhounds finesse only run, and not a no looting run. Once I got there, I just simply farmed this bird until I was meeting the star requirements. Oh my god, guys, I have the LGBTQ sword, isn't that amazing? But the fire giant was still hitting me very hard, as I had no good armor, and I had no idea how to dodge his second phase. Wait, wait, no! Bro, I was killed by his ball sack. So first of all, I decided to farm even more levels until I can medium roll with Rodan's armor. Oh, and I also got a bird with golden eyes that has a 0.5% chance of spawning, which shows for how long I was doing this garbage. But it turns out that having the second best armor in the game doesn't even have a noticeable effect. Thankfully, I had a plan B. Because I've already killed Radon, I progressed Alexander Questline. And thus, the only thing left to do was simply defeat the Magma Worm. Yeah, this time there was no NPC summon to help me. And this boss was a pain. Mostly because every single one of his attacks is delayed. And it's delayed so much that while this dinosaur makes a swing, I can go and watch every episode of One Piece. Furthermore, he litters the area with lava just like some other boss that makes it even harder to simply move around the arena. Even if you look at the names of my files, you can see my mind slowly descending into madness. But before I tell you how I defeated this boss, look at this footage and guess what boss I was fighting here. It was the double omen boss fight. And no, I'm not trying to make a joke that this boss fight is set in the dark and thus my footage is completely dark. No, that's how GeForce recorded it. And from now on, some of my footage will be just black screen for no reason. But the most bizarre thing is that this glitch works only when I'm recording Elden Ring. No other game on my computer suffers from this. It's just Elden Ring. So from now on, if you see this footage right here on your screens, this means that my recording for this event was completely black. And the reason why I started talking about this is because GeForce didn't record the footage where I defeated the Magma Worm, but in short I was dual wielding Morgoth's Cursed Sword and Bloodhound's Fang in order to deal big damage. And so with this newfound strat and Alexander, I absolutely decimated the fire giant. My previous challenge run really made me forget how powerful NPC summons are. Oh, oh, his stance broke him. Wait, alright. Wait, damn, look at all the damage. 26 hours, by the way. Alexander, you are insane. Now I could finally commit arson and because of that get sent to jail, I mean Farmazula, where I got gang banged by a bunch of beastmen, just like in prison. Unfortunately, in order to get out of the horny jail, I had to defeat the big bosses of the gym, this being Nikocado Avocado himself. <laughs> 
but unfortunately the McDonald's ambassador and his friend turned out to be an unbalanced piece of sh too hard for me to handle, so I decided to defeat a decaying ikis, 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 ikis. to get an upgraded version of the Rotten Breath spell. And just like with the Magma Worm, this boss was a pain. But this time, not because of his delayed attack, although they were certainly not making this fight easier, but because of his Rotten Breath attack. It is absolutely insane. This Rotten Vomit covers a gigantic area with a gigantic Scarlet Rot cloud that not only applies Scarlet Rot, but also deals damage. The problem is that one Scarlet Rot proc is basically a death sentence because I can't upgrade any flasks. This means that whenever this man starts casting any Rotten Breath attack, I have to immediately get on Torrent and run to the other side of Kaelid, because it could be this particular Rotten Breath attack. And even during my successful attempt, I did a lot of mistakes. I failed to dodge the easiest attack, and I had Scarlet Rot applied. The only reason why I won this boss fight is because of the bleed proc that the pumpkin head managed to do at the very last second. Now I had the improved version of the Rotten Breath attack, but I wasn't stopping here, as then I decided to farm a little bit of runes in order to meet the stat requirements and defeat the remaining tree spirits in order to get golden seeds. First of all, we have the one in Altus Plateau that I've already tried beating before, but failed. Thankfully this time I quickly got rid of him, because dual wielding is completely broken. But when trying to upgrade my flasks, I realized that I need two golden seeds. Fortunately enough, there is a tree spirit right here that... ...that I can get access to if I go through this hero's grave. Overall, it wasn't very difficult and the boss was also very simple. I mean, it's the first dungeon you encounter in the game, obviously it's easy. Now I had a total of 7 flasks at my disposal, 3 of which I allocated to mana. And this time I did much more progress in the Goskin fight, despite the fact that whenever I was using Rotten Breath I was basically trading damage, I still managed to apply Scarlet Rot on both of the Godskins, which meant that I was basically doing twice the damage, and allowed me to decrease their health to around 60%. Wait, what? Why? This is so random, there is no logic to it. It's just that sometimes he decides to roll over the pillar and others he just stays there. It's pure RNG based. There's nothing I can do about it. I was very pissed off by the Goskin duel and thus I wanted to find a good endgame weapon I could use. Now because I couldn't loot anything and I could use only arcane type weapons, my choice wasn't all that hard, and I decided to get Mogwin's Sacred Spear. It has a great Ash of War that will allow me to farm the Albinorix, and it has a great blood loss buildup. But there was one slight complication. <laughs> The thing with Moog is that he's not simply an endgame boss like Godfrey, he's a post-endgame boss like Melania, and that's why Miyazaki thinks it's completely acceptable to make the boss litter the arena with burning piss. Because at this point you have all your flask upgrade to max level, but I can't upgrade them at all. Furthermore, even if I miraculously survive the first phase without taking any damage, the transition to the second phase will make me use all my healing flasks, which means that I will have to no-hit Moog, which out of all bosses I find the least fair, because no matter where you step there will be blood and fire on the ground. So just like with the Draconic Tree Sentinel, I decided to cheese Moog. You see, if you enter this boss fight and then quit out of the game, his area will be still loaded, and thus he'll be technically still there waiting for you. 
Now from here you can parkour down this cliff and if you fall in this hole in the textures that you normally use for farming, you can actually defeat Moog and get his remembrance. Now the only thing left to do was upgrade it. You might think that the maximum level I can achieve is plus 4, but this isn't entirely true. As there are a few scarabs scattered all around the lands between that drop somber smithing stones. In fact, there are only two scarabs that drop smithing stones 5, 6, 8 and 9. The somber smithing stone 7s can be dropped by the lions in the consecrated snow feud. And only one single ancient dragon smithing stone I already have. This means that I could only upgrade one weapon to plus 10 and another weapon to plus 9. So I upgraded my spear to plus 9 because I have high hopes for another remembrance weapon. Now with Mogwin's spear, the godskin boss fight was going much better, as I could hide behind the pillars and use blood ritual in order to deal big damage. Of course, the godskins could still hit me through the pillars, but it was quite unlikely. Although even with this setup, after fighting the boss for around 20 minutes, I eventually died. So I had another idea to make Bernal be available for this boss, so I quickly made my way to Rykard. Now I know that I couldn't defeat this boss because I can't get the Serpent Hunter, but at least I visited him and now Bernal was available as an NPC summon. And despite the fact that when you summon Bernal, the boss's health doubles, he is still an extremely powerful ally, as his weapon's Ash of War not only deals great damage, but also heals him, making him technically immortal. But even with all this help, I still couldn't complete this boss fight. Why? Why wouldn't you dodge? Why? I'm sorry, but it's not my fault the game can't register my inputs! Oh wait, I had no stamina. Oh, okay, that makes, that makes a lot more sense. It seems like this is still not enough, so I decided to come back to the previous strat of dual wielding, but now I needed another great spear. The first thing I did was defeat Borealis, and not that I really needed his breath attack, in fact I just ended up never using it, but I just needed to take a break from this garbage. I've been banging my head against this boss fight for more than 4 hours. And it was such a relief to see at least one boss get defeated. But Borealis wasn't my main target, I actually wanted to defeat Vike, because I thought that he would drop his spear. But it turns out that it's the other version of him that drops the spear, to which I can't get. So I decided to visit Deep Root Depths, because there is a Crucible Knight that drops another Great Spear. Now I tried getting there the normal way by defeating the two Valiant Gargoyles, but this duo is even worse than the Godskin. But there was a second method of getting there, but for that I have to visit the worst location in the entire game. And after defeating Moog, who was much easier be because he couldn't do his Nihil attack, I could get access to a secret platforming section that turned out to be the real boss fight of this dungeon. But once I finished it, I got access to even more platforming, let's go! But most importantly, Siluria, who dropped her spear. Of course, I've upgraded my spear to only plus 4, as I didn't want to use my already limited somber smithing stones, and just like that, by duo wielding the spears, using blood ritual and utilizing Bernal as my meat shield, I finally completed the Godskin duo. And one important thing I need to mention is that if I had access to the academy, then I could buy sleep arrows from the merchant that is located there, so if there was some sort of teleporter or glitch in order to get into the academy, this 5 hours suffering could have been completely avoided. The next boss was Malekith, but there was one thing I had to do before it. As I 
suspected. Victory was impossible. This vessel was found lacking. My thanks. I knew you were the stuff of champions. It was a marvelous battle. I implore you. Take what I become from inside me. All the vessels are destined to one day break. The great Alexander is a warrior to his last. Alexander, no! This is so sad. F's in the chat for Alexander. Now I had Shard of Alexander that was boosting my blood ritual damage even further. Did it help during the Malekith boss fight? No, not at all. Also, can someone explain to me why is the first phase of this boss incredibly easy while the second one makes you regret your entire existence? This gigantic difficulty spike just makes no sense. Now, before I tell you my strategy that I used to defeating Malekith, I am happy to announce to you that I fixed my GeForce black screen problem. What did it cost? Everything. Yeah, I lost all my progress on every single character I have. Am I an idiot for doing that? Yes. But it had some benefits that I will talk in a minute. Of course, not to waste time, I cheated myself all the equipment and levels I had before, so the first few bosses weren't an issue. But endgame bosses like the Giant and Godskin duo made me suffer a little bit more. So we can add two more failed attempts to the Fire Giant and three more failed attempts to the Godskin duo, even though I've already killed them. As I said before, during his second phase, Malekith is extremely aggressive, and thus it is quite difficult to land hits, so I decided to buy some serpent arrows in order to apply poison, and then just run away from him while his health is slowly ticking down. But up until the moment when I lost all my progress, I just kept on dying during this boss. But to my surprise, after I spent 3 days getting to the same point where I was before, I defeated Malekith on my first try. And this is not the first time this happens. In the previous challenge run, I also took a 4 day break and managed to defeat Hora Lu on my first try. So if you're having any trouble killing a specific boss, Try and do other activities instead, or just play a completely different game for a couple of days, and you'll most likely succeed. One thing I also didn't mention is that during the Malekith boss fight, I frequently took advantage of Cerulea's Row, which despite dealing holy damage is a very great ranged Ash of War. Then we had Gideon, which was very easy compared to my previous challenge run, and I almost, almost beat him on my first try. But the next obstacle was Godfrey. And I was once again stuck on this boss fight. And again, just like last time, the first phase was incredibly simple. Meanwhile, when Horolu was taking over, I was dying in less than 20 seconds. I'm not kidding, I actually counted. And again, just like with the Godskin boss, I have tried a lot of different strategies, like going back to Bloodhound Finesse, using poisonous stone clumps, which are actually very effective in applying poison, especially because in this run I haven't used them at all. I've also found out that I can spawn the Mad Pumpkinhead after the Godfrey transitions into his second phase, so like this I have at least some kind of protection. Although I have noticed that Horalu is much more aggressive than other bosses, as even if I'm just close to him, not even attacking him, he will still consider me as his target. Also, I figured out that I could use my Ash of War after Horalu makes his jump to deal big damage, and the animation ends at the exact moment when I need to dodge his launch attack, although it would eventually lead to me getting hit. What? Why? 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 
Oh, I had no stamina again. Oh. Yeah, this makes sense. But otherwise, I was just too scared to punish any of his attacks. Because if I press the spacebar key a little millisecond late, my character will be flying into the stratosphere. And the worst part is that even when I was doing really well, I was still managing to fail a dodge because one fight with Horolu was taking nearly half an hour. And even during great attempts, the game was finding other ways to make me fail. What was that? Do you have any idea what PC specs I have? Do you know what RTX card I have? Lag just shouldn't be even possible in this universe. No, but it's because of the lag. I, I know everybody uses this as an excuse, but here it was genuinely the lag. So eventually, I got sick and tired of this and decided to let all my frustration out on the Albinorix and farm 2 million runes, which took only 45 minutes, which is less than 3 Horalu attempts. Yeah. With all these runes, I've upgraded my Vigor, Endurance and Mind. The main reason why I did this is so I can get rid of my Mana Talisman and replace it with Godfrey's Icon, because Silurius Vo is a chargeable skill, and thus it benefits from the buff. I also noticed that Lord's Divine Fortification and Black Flame are being sold by the Twin Mated Husks, which will be very useful. So with all these items at my disposal, I entered the fight. During the first phase, I punished only two attacks, the first one being this Axe Slam, as it has a pretty decent window to attack and it's really easy to bait out. The second one was when Godfrey buries his axe into the ground, although it was quite risky as if you miss the two following attacks, you're most likely dead. Although another very important thing I did was not use any flasks or spirit summons before I get to Horolu, because or else I will just end up wasting my shield from my wondrous physic. Speaking of the devil, during the entire fight I was punishing the same exact attack, it being this jump. As I said before, I can execute Salurius Bow and get out just in time before Godfrey manages to catch me. During this phase, everything I did is run away and then use poisonous stone clumps to apply poison. Also here we can see why I wanted to save the shield for this phase in particular. Overall, I didn't even end up using my incantations, it just boiled down to doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit to change. That is crazy. Now the only thing left to do was defeat the Elden Beast. But before that I decided to upgrade my flasks even further. You see, it turns out I haven't killed all tree spirits. So I defeated the putrid spirit in the war dead catacombs and cheesed the one in the helic tree, because there is no way I'm fighting this boss in a pool of melanious piss. Of course I still couldn't upgrade the amount replenished by my flasks, but it was better than nothing. If I had to describe Radagon in two words, it would be nicer Godfrey, because he also has multi-attack combos just like Horolu, but he has a lot of punish windows. Although this doesn't mean that this fight is easy, as one thing that I had to understand is that when fighting Radagon, you have to be really patient. There were many moments when I tried to sneak in another hit when Radagon wasn't doing anything but instead I was receiving a holy hammer in the jawline. And of course he had some attacks that I have no idea how to dodge, in particular this hammer thrust. It's just so fast I don't even have time to react to it, but otherwise every other attack I learned how to dodge. But during my first attempts I was really suffering especially because of how little damage I was dealing. So 
so I tried using my Ash of War more often, but the only attack I could punish with this skill was this Holy Grab. But then one of my friends that was watching me broadcast asked me why do I use this skill more often and I responded to him, well because or else I'll get hit or something. But then the next day I actually decided to check Radagon's attacks if I could punish them using my Ash of War and the amount of attacks that can be punished with a skill is just astonishing. Every single charged hammer attack can be punished with a skill. Overall, I've always considered Radagon one of the worst bosses because he can parry projectiles, he's very quick and aggressive, but now that I've learned his moveset, I actually start to like this boss more than Godfrey. After a couple of hours, I completed this boss fight almost without damage. I was also constantly stance breaking him right before he transitions into his second phase, which was obviously helping out a lot. But as said by the legend himself, not bad, not bad at all. But you have so much more shit to wade through. Seek and destroy. As you already know, the Elden Beast really likes running away from you, which elongates the fight even further. And because he elongates the fight even further, he will certainly execute an attack I have no idea how to dodge, and thus will eventually kill me. And this boss has so much more attacks than Radagon, I have no idea how to dodge. First of all, we have any golden beam attack. And although I know that you have to go in zigzags in order to avoid them, there will be still at least one or two holy projectiles that will hurt me all the time. Another attack I genuinely don't understand is similar to Radagon's attack, as it also draws the Elden Ring on the floor. Now, if I am really close to the Elden Beast or really far away, I can easily dodge this attack. But if I happen to be in the middle of this attack's range, I will always get hit by it. Because it appears to work like horror loose jump explosion that doesn't do damage all at once, but in a wave formation of sorts. Another attack I just can't get the hang of is this slam. It's just way too fast for me to react to. I either dodge too soon and get hit, or press the spacebar too late and end up not dodging at all. Of course, there are a bunch of other attacks like the Elden Stars which will hit me, but it's not that much damage compared to these two in particular. Also, when I use my weapons Ash of War, I realized that this is much less damage than I was doing to Radagon. So I started wondering if I can get some sort of spell or incantation that has great damage and then I remembered that I have the Scorching Black Flame incantation. But I didn't have enough slots for it. And I definitely didn't want to remove heal or uh, Lord's Divine Fortification, so I decided to defeat the Demi-Human Queen in Mount Gelmer to get another Memory Stone. Also, in case you're wondering why do I have every single memory slot, is because after my save file was deleted, I just gave myself every single item with cheats. But don't worry, I'm not using more incantations than I should, and even if I did that, you would quickly notice a big damage difference. Speaking of damage, Scorching Black Flame is a chargeable incantation and thus Godfrey's icon is very helpful, but that's not the most important part, as it deals percentage based damage. Also you might have already noticed that my mana bar is a little... That's... <coughs> that's pretty average, I don't... Those, I don't know what you're... Those, that's normal size. ...is much bigger and that's because I did a little bit of farming so I can use more incantations during the fight. But of course, the fight with the Elden Beast was still not easy, as I was managing to die even on the easiest attacks. In addition to this, I also figured out that spawning the Mad Pumpkin Head is just not worth it, as he can survive for only 5 seconds, meanwhile, he uses half of my entire FP bar. So this challenge run turned into a no spirit run in the last few hours of it. I also completely stopped using Scorching Black Flame, so I can allocate all of my mana usage on Lord's Divine Fortification and the Heal spell, which were a saving grace during this boss. And I also tried to use Blood Ritual as least as possible during Radagon's boss fight, so I have even more FP to work with. And just like that, 
on the 24th of July, I managed to beat the Elden Beast. Um, is this a safe enough distance? Oh, no, oh, no, it's not. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay, it's fine. I will make it. I will kill this boss. I will not die. Okay, okay, that, that's the easiest attack. Okay. Oh, oh, no, 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 okay, th this attack is actually fine. It, it's amazing how just panic rolling is better at dodging this attack than, well, actually trying to learn the, the, the timing. Oh, yes. Oh, my God, yes. Is she, yes. We actually did it. We beat the Elden Beast. I, I can't believe it. We beat Elden Ring without looting anything. Okay, yes, yes, mend the Elden Ring. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, we actually did it. Oh, then, oh, my heart rate is so high right now. Damn, I haven't had this in a long time. Like, in a long time. Ooh, okay. And so, just like that, I finally completed the challenge and beat Elden Ring without looting anything. Or did I? I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that in this challenge, I also try and get all remembrances. All remembrances. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. Someone please help me.